start with the location. The top floor. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Bright and saturated for a happy tone. Inform us to find out where it's going to be held. Not just where we look, but where we don't look. And as you watch Drive... Who are you? I'm the guy. This scene from Joker is a perfect example of Todd and I. I always like primes because I like the comfortable. What exactly is the camera doing that makes these similar shots? And puff, because it was one shot. Very thankful for this <laughs> camera thing. If it's going to be a whip and stop on somebody. Follow her, we stay on her. Kill the Nazis. I like watching video essays on film theory as much as the next guy. Director's commentary, behind the scenes, give me all of it. But what if I were to tell you that if you're a new filmmaker, studying movies like this might do you more harm than good? Don't stone me yet, okay? Let me explain. Raise your hand if this is you. You've watched a ton of delicious video essays on your favorite films. You watch this stuff till the concepts are bubbling out of your ears. And you think to yourself, you know, I get this filmmaking stuff. I know why Steve done what he done when he shot that one movie. I know why my boy Nolan done what he done when he shot those Batman movies. I know how my boy Roger Deakins lights a scene. I get it. A month later, you go into production on your first short, you find yourself on set later, and uh, your mind just kind of goes blank. All those delicious breakdowns, poof, gone. You've got no clue where to put the camera. Worse yet, you realize all those cool shots you had in mind are out of the question. You start thinking, you know, there's a lot of stuff those guys have that you don't have. You don't have multiple camera packages or a camera department. You don't have access to nice lenses. You don't have a locations manager or access to cool and interesting locations. You don't have a crew. You don't have a grip truck. You don't have jibs. You don't have dollies. You don't have lights. You don't have investors or any financial backers fronting the money for your projects. How are you supposed to tell a story the way the big guys do when all you got's a camera on some sticks? Now when you look at your favorite movies, you groan and you say, if only I could find somebody to give me money, cause I could kill this film game, bruh bruh. I just need somebody to give me a chance. I can do all this, I get it. Do you though? Do you really? Or are you missing something? As I've said numerous times on this channel, your filmmaking journey, like many other things in life, is broken up into phases. First, there's the skill builder phase, right? You learn how to turn a camera on, all the basic stuff. Then there's the curation phase. This phase is all about consuming the works of others to find out what you like and what you don't like, what inspires you. Then there's the imitation phase, right? The name says it all. You're borrowing from creative works and other filmmakers that inspired you, and you're experimenting, trying things out. As they say, first you imitate, then you innovate, which leads us to our next phase, innovation. You've built up enough skills, you've tried enough things out to find your own sauce, right? And you end up finding a unique approach to doing what you do that feels fresh. If you skip any one of these phases, disappointment and heartbreak are sure to follow. Prime example, if you're a newbie, it's probably not a good idea to rent a red camera and try shooting an hour and a half long movie. Too much too soon. Each phase has a specific area of focus. If you're in the skill builder phase, your focus is building skills. You should be shooting exercises to learn how camera settings work, how sound works, etc. I'm guessing many of you are in the curation phase or else you probably wouldn't have clicked on this video. For many of you, this is where the train goes off the tracks. If you're studying the wrong things in this phase, it can dramatically slow down your growth. If you want to grow organically in filmmaking, you need to understand something, bro. Producing short films and producing feature length movies are two different animals. Producing a short film is a lot like riding a bicycle and producing a feature length movie is a lot like riding a motorcycle. You can watch YouTube videos all day long about how to ride a motorcycle, but that's not going to help you learn how to ride a bicycle. Each endeavor comes with very specific skill sets. You'll find that once you nail down producing short films, many of those skill sets that you learn shooting shorts cross over naturally into the feature length movie world. If you know how to ride a bicycle, it's a lot easier to learn how to ride a motorcycle. But you won't find a lot of crossover the other way around because when you're producing feature length movies, you're juggling a different set of circumstances. This is what many new filmmakers are doing. We're just skipping the basics, camera settings, how to record sound. We're just getting to the fun stuff. They just jump to vegging out on video essay after video essay about their favorite filmmakers. This is great input, but not the right time. Then you hop to studying your favorite Hollywood slash Indiewood films. We're talking budgets $100 million plus. Then you hop to watching cinematography breakdowns on your favorite films as you prepare to shoot your first short film. Bear in mind, you haven't studied any shorts yet, and you're about to shoot one. Two weeks before the shoot, you realize you're rusty on all the camera settings, so you veg out on the basics. You shoot your first short, your mind goes blank, it doesn't turn out how you like, you wonder how you're supposed to do this film stuff with next to nothing, and then you go back to studying $10 million and $100 million plus movies again. 
and you wonder why everything is so confusing. At this point, many people just get frustrated and flat out quit altogether. But we're overlooking the, the most obvious thing here. You're studying the wrong stuff. Great input, but wrong timing. You can't borrow from or experiment with any of the stuff you're studying because none of this stuff is actionable at your level. So how are you supposed to grow? <laughs> Let me get to the point here. Spending all of your time breaking down and watching video essays on movies like this won't help you make your next no budget short film. You gotta crawl before you can walk, bruh bruh. You're skipping steps. If you're at the stage where you're making short films, then you should be studying more short films. When I was in film school, we broke down a ton of short films, different budget levels, different crew sizes. We didn't get into breaking down features until after we had made a number of shorts. But how do we study short films? What are we looking for exactly? Well, you study the framing choices, the shot design. Can you guess what lens they used? How did they use blocking to tell a story? What's the pace of the edit? How did they use sound design, color, wardrobe? How did they build tension? Look at the lighting choices. How many actors do they have? How many locations do you see? How did they use the fundamental principles of drama, characters with goals, and not. How do all of these elements work together to create the overall impact? We've all got busy lives, right? Finding time to break down an hour and a half plus long feature length movie can be a challenge, but not so hard to find 10 or 20 minutes to watch and break down a short film. Far less of a time commitment. I am not advocating that you stop studying your favorite movies. That's ridiculous. What I am saying is you got to balance that shit out. But wait, there's a lot of short films out there. Which ones should you be studying? It depends on what you're working on. For example, if you have no money, no crew, and very little experience, you should be studying short films that manage to tell an engaging story with just two actors in a room. We call these chamber films. Everybody's had to make at least one of these in film school. You can shoot them for next to nothing using your house or a friend's house for a location. There are plenty of short films like this out there on the internet. It's your job to find them and study them. There is a laundry list of different reasons why you might study short films. Learning to shoot with limited resources is just one of them. This is why I started the Short Film Breakdown Archive. I wanna try and replicate that experience that I got in film school for you cats. This is a space where I can share these breakdowns and my observations about the craft with you. I'm no Steven Spielberg. I don't know everything there is to know about film. I don't think anyone does, but breaking down shorts has really helped me over the years, and I'm pretty sure it'll help you too. I'm still making all my videos on the YouTubes, don't worry about that, I'm not going anywhere. But over in the Short Film Breakdown Archive, I examine the works of others and share those breakdowns with you. It's a different kind of content from me on a different platform. I want this to be an ever-growing resource that you can turn to on your journey to becoming a better storyteller. If you're looking to level up your storytelling game and you want to join the archive, hey, links are below. I'd love to see you over there. It'll be fun. As always, keep hustling small tweaks, make big peaks, deeper down.